Okay, gang so I am I have put this 20 inch paver down as a base for my fountain um, I took a tub stopper because the hole in the bottom of the container was only about the size of a nickel and there wasn't anything else that I could find to put in it to uh, account for that opening so I put the tub stopper on put a layer of glue underneath it to hold it down and then sealed it with some silicone as you guys can see I am filling up the base now. I've already tested the solar filter. Hi, Romy. Help yourself, buddy. <laughs> um, I've already tested the solar panel. It comes with a little solar panel there, um, I, and it, it works. What I'm doing is I'm fixing to put a water dunk in it um, to keep us from having critters. I mean, I haven't seen any mosquitoes since I've moved here, but better safe than sorry, and they are animal safe, so, you know, all's well. Um, and I'm gonna get it put together. You know, after Romy is done wetting his whistle. <laughs> what you doing? Are you enjoying that? I'm so glad you're having a good time. <laughs> You're so cute. So I'm trying out fountain heads. Here is fountain head number one. Not a real big splash pattern. Still enough to keep water movement so that the birds know that this is something for them to play in. Um, so this is number one. I'm having trouble choosing. I've tried on a couple of different ones, but here is number one. Romeo is kind of wigged out by all of them. He keeps wanting to stick his face in here and have a field day. As you can see, he's got water dripping off of him. He's having a good time getting his fill. But that's, that's uh, cap number one. Cap number two's got kind of a wide spray, kind of messy. I, I like it, but at the same time, I think it might be a bit much. Got cap number three, and as you guys can see, it's not no upward spray. Um, sideways really only and I'm not sure 100% if the birds are going to be down with that. They might be. I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess so long as there's moving water involved, I don't guess they'll care, but I'm trying to do this in such a way to make it visually appealing and appealing to the birds all at the same time. So this is cap number three. And this is cap number four. It's a combination of upward and sideways water. I think it'll do kind of both what I'm, of what I'm wanting, a little bit of visual and a little, you know, bird enticement all at the same time. These caps are pretty much interchangeable um, and I, I kind of like all of them for different reasons but maybe you guys can help me pick one out. I'm just going to stick one on there temporarily until I, I get a good solid idea of what we're doing. Okay and here's our here's our bird dunk. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with these. They are all natural. They're safe for animals and you stick them into whatever water source you're using. They're good for 30 days. They keep the insects down. They're non-toxic to animals. So the fact that Chucklehead here can't keep his face out of it, it's probably gonna be okay. Um, yeah, no problem. The fact that old boy here is fascinated by this thing simply because it's new. It's a new water source and he's like, oh look, new water, let me stick my face in it. Um, he ran off for a minute. One of the neighbors was walking up the road and you know, he's, he's leery of women for some reason. I don't know why. He, he loves men. He's like, hey, bro, how goes it? But a new female comes around and he gets a little spooky like he's not sure what to do with himself. <laughs> okay, so I've got my plate on. I've got the hose run through. I did a little bit of silicone. This thing kind of cracked a little bit when I was drilling the hole, the center, the holes, drainage holes in them. Um, but I'm sealing it off and I'm gonna, that'll make it a little bit watertight so the water doesn't drain from the top pot into this. I want it to overflow from the top pot into this dish here. And then um, from there, we will have regular flow. There'll be an actual water cascade down the top pot. So by doing it this way, it makes it a little bit more watertight. Um, now, yes, it'll make it a little bit more complicated when I go to put another water dunk in it for later, but this is the best best practice, I think, to ensure that I get exactly what I want out of it. Um, I gotta let this sit for 30 minutes or so and let it uh, cure, and then I'll be back out to finish it out. Okay, so 30 minutes, and then the sealant on the uh, tray will be good and cured. 
Um, and from there, you know, to replace the water dunk, I'll have to go out there and, um, you know, take the top pot off and take all the rocks out and just lift the tray, drop another dunk in, keep on going, put it all back together. Um, like I said, I haven't seen any mosquitoes since I've moved here, um, mainly because there are so many lizards, I think. Um, but, you know, I figured it would be just a good precautionary measure to ensure that there are no problems. Um, I'm really kind of hoping I won't have to worry about that. It'll be nice just to be able to let it just run and do its own thing. Um, but this is just a protective measure on my part now. Um, first couple of times that I do it just just to ensure that there's no mosquito issues I have to worry about I'm gonna have to take the top part and the rocks and all that stuff out lift the tray out throw another dunk in put the tray back in put everything back together but that's no big deal I would rather do that um, just until I know for sure that everything is squared away but um, I am uh, really looking forward to seeing this uh, this fountain put together because I think it's gonna be pretty um, I will have to show you guys uh, the rocks that I got to put in it. These, I got three bags of these right here. I know I'm not gonna need all of them, but a large portion of these are gonna be going in the top pot to weight it down and to create like a little platform inside of it um, for the birds to stand on. And the pot is fairly deep and I did not want to have to worry about making more than one trip to Lowe's but I thought these were super duper pretty. They're white, they're gonna create like a really pretty contrast against the pots. Um, and uh, just waiting for everything to cure up so that I can go ahead with the next stage. After this though, I am going to um, be kind of calling it a day on my projects and everything because I need to bathe, because I have to go to class tonight. Um, and before I do, I'm gonna try to leave early enough that um, I can go to Walmart. I've got to pick up some bird seed for my bird feeder there. Um, this is one of those awesome little four, four entry bird feeders. And it's got the little counterweight thing on it so that when like a squirrel tries to climb onto it, it closes it so that they can't get to the bird seed. But I got this bad boy at um, Hobby Lobby. See how much that thing costs? Like the original price sticker on it, 60 bucks. I got it for 70% um, off last year so I'm not and I wasn't fixing to turn that down because there's a there's a huge amount of bird seed storage there and then with the anti squirrel uh, built in I was like you know I hadn't really seen many squirrels but you know I don't want my poor birds to be fighting with them um, I had a pretty sizable uh, buffet rotation coming through last year so I'm hoping once I get these guys reset um, that I'll start seeing them again um, I've got one of the uh, little hangers that you put like the little uh, suet pieces into and I've got some varying flavors of that like nuts and fruits and you know energy boost and all this other stuff you know to go in it there's like it's like a four two on each side so that they can go and pick and have some some little fat and stuff like that and some suet and some random pieces out of it so I'm gonna get that hung back up too um, so because I that's actually one of my favorite things in the morning to do is to sit and watch the birds while I have my coffee and um, it gives the cats free cat TV you know that they can't like jump up and grab um, but yeah I thought that'd be nice okay so I waited my 30 and uh, put the top pot on um, that comes with like a little foam disc you know, um, and I took that foam disc and it's about almost as big as my hand, but I put that foam disc, slid it all the way down to the bottom of the top pot and um, put water in it. And sure enough, it uh, leaked straight through. <laughs> it was holding no water at all. Um, and it went straight through into the disc, which means it went down into the water reservoir. So um, what I have done is um, I took everything apart momentarily um, took some of the water out of the reservoir I mean it did it did automatically overflow some of it but not enough of it so I had to scoop some water out put everything back together I've put the top pot back on and I took some there's like uh, about a nickel size hole 
in the bottom of that top pot. So I ran everything back through and I have caulked and sealanted the holy moly heck out of it, which means um, ideally I'm not gonna be able to take it apart again if I want it to continue to stay watertight. I, if I do it, then I'll have to reseal it every single time I take it apart to put a dunk in it. Um, what I'll probably have to do is instead of taking it apart and putting the dunk in the bottom reservoir, I'll have to pull a couple of rocks out of the top, put a dunk in there, and put the rocks back on top of it um, because it's going to continue to cycle water. So the top will hold water, the bottom will hold water, and as the pump runs, it'll overflow the top one into the bottom one, so everything will continue to cycle. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm on another 30 minute gap here while I wait for that sealant to cool. Um, and then I will be able to um, fit, put some water in it, make sure that it's whole, it's watertight like I need it to be, which I'm sure it will be because the get, I mean, from the inside of the pot to the bottom of the pot is about this, about this big, probably about a half an inch, maybe a little bit more. And I filled the entire thing with sealant. So if it doesn't hold water, I will be, I'll be shocked. I'll be extremely shocked. Um, but as soon as that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some rocks in it because um, before I even try to put any water into it because I know that the rocks are gonna take up a lot of room um, and they're gonna help um, kind of cut back on exactly how much water I need to put into it. But um, yeah, on another break. <laughs> um, uh, I'm catching a lot of attention from the neighbors with all the different stuff that I'm doing. My next door neighbor, um, well, she actually, she's not my next door neighbor. She actually used to live directly across the street from me, her and her wife. Um, I went into Lowe's to get my plants um, for the for the flower bed and I happened upon her and she was just like, hey, so what are you doing? I said, well, I come to get plants because I'm redoing the front flower bed. And she said, yeah, I saw what you did to the other half of it. She says that she's like the way things are going, you're going to have the nicest looking house on the block. Um, she says, you're going to have everybody out here putting everybody, putting everybody to shame and have everybody feeling a kind of way about the way their place looks. And I told her, I said, you know, so that's not my aim. I said, I just really want my place to be as pretty on the ins on the outside as I think it is on the inside, you know. Um, I said, and it just makes me feel good to be able to come home and look at my house on the outside and be like, my house is so cute, y'all. Um, and she just kind of laughed. She said, no, I ain't mad at you. She says, but, you know, ain't nobody else on the, on the block doing all the stuff that you're doing. They ain't even trying. She says, people are just kind of leaving their stuff as it is. I said, no, I know. I said, and I don't fault them that. But, you know, I said, I just kind of want what I want, you know. Um, and actually, just now, when I was out there um, emptying the water, the last little bit of water out of the top pot and putting it in and drying it out, my neighbor who lives catty corner to me, her name is Miss Wanda. She's a real nice lady. Um, her and her husband um, live there, and that's a whole story and I feel so bad for her she's got it kind of rough but she come out to take something to the garbage and she saw me out there and she said hey Heather and she waved at me she said what you doing I said I'm putting together a fountain she said oh that's fancy it's really not <laughs> um I know it's probably gonna look fancier than you know it probably sounds but you know I um, I had done research on um, you know fountains before I actually decided to do what I'm doing now and um, honestly um, fountains are really expensive there's a place the same place that I was talking about on the other side of the bridge that has all these really decorative elaborate pots you know they have fountains there like pre-made fountains there and they are not cheap you're talking about because of the fact that they've got the really elaborate glazing and all that stuff you're talking about 250 dollars plus for a for a fountain and even though you know the idea of going and just buying one outright you know is kind of nice at the same time i don't want to spend 250 dollars for that um by the time I figured it up, you know, I'm spending way less than even a hundred because that 14 ounce pot on the bottom, that's our big reservoir, that was a $22 pot. The one on the top, which is going to be near our pedestal, it was a $13 pot. So right there, you're looking at what, uh, $35 for just the pot. I paid, um, you know, the silicone I already had, the, um, I'm trying to think. The sealant cost me six bucks. 
the water pump cost me 15 so there's another 21 so let's say $80 um, and then the rocks cost me I think $15 all total because they were $5 a bag so I'm looking at a hundred bucks in on this fountain which I will never have to put together again now that I'm done with it it will it will be there as long as I want it to be um, and for the price of one pre-made fountain I can make two so um, yeah and, and I, I guess I'll do the numbers even though I've kind of sort of walked myself through it already um, yeah I mean it, it's a project it gives me something to do it gives me gives me that good dopamine hit that you know you get from starting a task and completing a task and being able to sit back and look at that and go wow that turned out even better than I hoped um, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now you know I'm just kind of like well I'm loving it so far um, and I can't wait to see it finished and I'm especially excited to see the birds you know getting in there splashing around and doing their little baths and all that stuff you know and the fact that you know the neighbors can look over at it and be like that is so pretty you know and maybe they'll get to a point where they're like I, I want to make one too you know it's just two pots you know um, I am all for um, doing little things like that that you know, give us a sense of satisfaction and a sense of, you know, joy when we can sit down, just sit and listen to the fountain, just kind of run and watch the birds flap about and um, just listen, just kind of enjoy life, you know. Um, I've made the joke before, you know, to people when I've what, that I've worked with that I call myself semi-retired and if you'll think about it I kind of sort of am because there are a lot of people who are of retirement age that are not as lucky as I am who have to work five days a week you know and here I am I work two days a week and then the rest of the week is mine and because of that you know I, I, I said it too you know I actually said it recently I'm project heavy and time light I have more stuff than I that I want to do then I have time to do it in. And um, I guess that's kind of the way it is for everybody who's retired, I guess, you know. Um, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad about it, you know. Um, now, the, having the endless amount of money would be, you know, great. That's why I said I need to win the lottery. I need to get lucky and win the lottery so that I have nothing but the kind of money that I want to be able to do all the things that I want to do. Um, and you know I really probably wouldn't change a thing um, about the way that I live my life right now I mean I love my little house you know I love my vehicles there are everything is paid for I don't I don't want for anything I'm incredibly lucky with the decisions that I've made over the course of my life you know to get me to this point um, and but you know there would be things that of course that I would want to do if I had the option to I would travel, you know, I, there are so many things on my bucket list that, you know, I would like to knock off before I get to a point where my health starts to uh, impact my ability to do those things, you know. Uh, so here we are having some deep intellectual thought processes and um, waiting on my sealant to dry so that I can get my uh, fountain put together because I'm ready to make some headway. I'm ready to be able to scratch that off my list, you know? Um, because I got 40 million other things that I wanna do. Um, oh, on a side note, on a side note, the whole deal with Romeo and the water thing, I've noticed he's not really all that fast. Like he's drinking out, he was drinking out of the fountain, but that's just because, you know, he's like, I'm outside, I'm thirsty, there's water, let's, let's do this. Um, but overall he is not a like when he's outside he's not fascinated by anything water related he doesn't play in the rain when he's outside and it starts to rain he du he ducks underneath the travel trailer on the property next door to mine um or he's up underneath the car or underneath the truck and he's just like i don't want to get wet but for some reason when he is in the house he is fascinated with anything that has to do with water the sinks fascinate him the sh every time I get in the shower, if he's in the house, he's paw he jumps up on the sink and he paws and he sticks his head in and he's just watching me bathe. He's it's just the weirdest thing, little little voyeur, little furry voyeur, um, and he is especially fascinated with the toilet. There for some reason, 
he wants me he wants to watch me flush the toilet every time I had for any reason doesn't matter it doesn't matter what's in there he, he wants to watch it he wants to watch it go down <laughs> I don't know why I, I, it's just it's just the funniest thing but I've got some I've got the I've got such a good life you guys I've got such a good life There are days, absolutely, where I'm just like, what am I really doing here? What is the point of me being here? Why am I still here when my mom is not here? And my mom made such a broader impact in the lives of people around her than I ever could have. You know, I have those days. It's impossible not to have those days. But there are so many days that are like today that I'm just like, I love my life. I'm incredibly grateful for my life. Okay, so here's the finished product on the fountain. The water's kind of cloudy because the rocks had like a really fine powdery stuff on them. Um, and I've tried to turn it, I tried to turn the sensor up so that it would catch some light and I guess it's too cloudy for it to run. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to come back out tomorrow when the fun, and when the sun is out full and it's got good solid solar activity for that thing to respond to. And I'm, I'll get some more video then. Um, but I have a story time for you guys in addition to everything else that you've seen today about that one right there. Apparently, um, apparently there's a lot that I didn't know about him. <laughs> so, um, I had to come to class today, which I already mentioned. I don't know why I brought it up again. Um, and, um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for it to start. I'm here quite a bit early. Um, I figured while I was here, I would tell you guys about what happened, um, and the interaction that took place before I left the house. Um, so I was sitting in the yard, putting these rocks in the fountain and, um, go, doing my thing. I was not long from, you know, finishing. And, um, <clears throat> this lady in an SUV pulls into the driveway. And I thought initially, I, I was like, okay, she's obviously lost. She's probably pulling in to back out the other way. She didn't. She got out. And, um, uh, she said, hi. She says, I'm so sorry to bother you. She says, can I ask you, what's your cat's name? And I look over and Romeo is at the side of the yard. And I said, oh, his name is Romeo. She said, oh, she said, well, um, I thought you'd want to know that his original name was Munchie. And I was just gobsmacked. I said, um, I said, is he your cat? And she said, well, he was. <laughs> Um, she said, I, she said, my name is Connie. She says, and my family owns this air conditioning, uh, repair company around the corner over here. She said, and, um, she said, that's where he was staying at before. She says, um, I got, I've had, he, she says, I'd had him for about three years. She says, I got him from a family friend, him and another kitten, um, right after Hurricane Michael. She says, they, they're the ones that named him Munchie. She said, but, um, she, uh, she said, uh, she said that I didn't pick the name. She says, but I had them, you know, because they lost their house in the storm. She said, so they couldn't keep them. She says, and that's how I ended up with them. She says, him and another kitten named Moira. She says, they're not from the same litter. She says, but they were the same age. I said, okay. I said, so I said, somehow or another, I said, he ended up over here. I said, and I opted to take care of him. I said, because I'm the type that I'm not ever going to let an animal go without food. And she said, uh, yeah, she says about, she said, when did you move here? I said, uh, about a year ago. I said, and he showed up about nine months ago. She said, yep. She said, that's right about the time that he disappeared from the shop. She says, and um, I didn't see him again for a long time. And I was really kind of worried about him. She says, because I don't know if you know or not. She says, or if you've seen them. She says, but the coyotes will run up and down the railroad tracks over there. She says, and I was kind of worried that maybe something had happened. 
she said i just have she says just out of nowhere she says he popped up at the shop about four months or so ago she says and i was so excited to see him she says and he ran come up to me and let me love on him and i picked him up and was being sweet to him and i was like oh i'm like well somebody's feeding you you've gained a little bit of weight my, my little man and um she said that she put him back down and he took off again and that she hadn't seen him again she didn't see him again for a good long while and she said probably a couple of weeks she said she saw him again after that on top of the car in my yard and she said that she thought that maybe it was him but she wasn't entirely sure so she said she comes by my house kind of sporadically um because of where their business is depending upon which way she chooses to go co you know, come or go depending on the day and uh, she said she's seen him out there several times and she was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's him. She says, I was trying to wait until I caught you. She says, and you just happened to be in the yard outside today. She says, I didn't just want to pull up and knock on your door. She says, I thought that would be rude. Um, and uh, I said, oh no, it would have been totally fine if you wanted to knock. I said, it would have been absolutely fine with me. And uh, she um, talked to me about how she got them how she got him and the other kitten and then she told me oh and he, he has all his shots i said well yeah I've, I've had his shots updated and i explained to her about the swollen face and she said and he's fixed and i said yeah the vet um checked him out to let me know i said and i actually had him scanned to see if he had a microchip i said and he didn't she said no i i didn't i never got to that point of actually microchipping them she said so yeah um that's why I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I said, um, I said, she said, I, let me ask you. She says, do you, do you enjoy having him here? And I said, oh, I do. I said, I love him. I said, he is just the silliest, sweetest little man. Um, I said, my life would be totally weird without him. And then I started telling her about, you know, the fascination with all the water <laughs> implements in the house and the fact that you know he likes to watch tv and all that stuff and she was like well i'm really glad that you know you're enjoying him you know um i said you do you want him back and she said oh no 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 she says obviously she said i was just taking care of him until you got here she says because cats have their persons and they pick their persons and he's picked you she says but i'm glad that he loves you and i'm glad that you love him and that you're taking such good care of him and she's, I told her, I said, you know, I said, pretty much everybody that meets him loves him. I said, I have these, this group of guys that comes over that helps me do projects and stuff. I said, and he's like all there, always there. He wants to be all up in it and he wants to socialize and all the guys really like him. I said, and there's even people that have never met him a day in their life that like him. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, I have a YouTube channel. I said, and I post videos like, like vlogs and every so often I'll be on live and he'll, I got on the live stream and he'll pop up in, in the office with me. I said, and I said, and everybody just loves him. I said, they think he's absolutely adorable and they say he's such a sweet boy. And she says, isn't he though? Um, so we talked about, you know, um, a, quite a few things, but she said, she says she turns and looks at him and she says munchie hi buddy and he trots over there to her and she said oh you remember me and she bends she bends down and she rubs him on the head and then um he trots his way up the up the driveway and he goes under my car and um wouldn't come out after that at one point we walked up there and we're kind of squatted down talking to him and he wouldn't come out and she said he, she says, he won't come out because he doesn't want me to take him. She says, and I'm not going to. She said, obviously, he's meant to be with you. She says, he came here with you for a reason. She says, you're his person. She says, and I'm not fixing to change that. She said, but I just wanted you to know what his backstory was so that you were aware, you know, of how he got here and where he's originally from and all that stuff. She said, he used to, she says, I used to, um, during the week, she said, you know, he would come in the office with me and just sit and keep me company while I did my work in the office. And on the weekends, you know, he would just like run around all weekend and I would come and feed them. And, you know, that was kind of it. And um, <clears throat> she said, little did I know, she says that he had found you and he was just like, well, well, 
time for me to go. And uh, uh, I just kind of laughed. I said, yeah, I said, isn't it funny how that works out? I said, he's actually not the first one that I've had that's found me. I said, and nine times out of 10, I said, you know, I, my life is better for it, you know? So I was like, I can't be mad. But I said, he... I said he's gotten to the point now where he goes outside during the day um, and plays and runs around and gets into stuff and um, he comes in at night and he sleeps in the bed with me and my other two and um, you know loves to eat and likes to watch TV and is fascinated with it, just about everything in the house because he um, it's not something that he was a accustomed to before I guess and uh, she said well it was so glad to meet you she says and I am so glad that he ended up with you and she said and by the way Romeo is the perfect name for him because he is such an incredibly loving little man and I said yes he is absolutely I, I, and then I explained to her the story of why he got named Romeo and um, and she started laughing. She said, yeah, I could see that. She says, that makes perfect sense. She said, well, I'm sorry to bother you. And by the end of it, we had talked for like 30 minutes. And um, uh, she she just left after that. So there we have it. There's Romeo's backstory that I didn't even know that he had because he just showed up one day. Um, apparently, he's a three-year-old. And that makes him about two, about a year and a half older than I thought he was. But uh whatever she said uh, you know she's like if you take care of him you know as as well as you have been so far she's like you're gonna have him a long time a long long time and I said well I hope so I sincerely hope so I said because my my world would be a little strange if he weren't here you know um, but super nice lady um, and that's this that's the untold story of Romeo I just thought I'd share <laughs>